I'm Dr. Mitch Harlan, and welcome to the Truth Talks podcast. I'm here with producer Chad, and we're doing a recap of the Richard Romito, Romito Foundation story. Yes, sir. That was a heck of a story. That was uh, uh, very emotional. It was. That, that, one, that one really, really, really was emotional to me. You know, some people in life, they have uh, something that, that, that hits them, and um, this couple uh, had three uh, similar stories, obviously with their three children, right. all having to change muscular dystrophy. Um, it was just, it was an amazing emotional story for him. Uh, I learned a ton, you know, I'm in the healthcare field. And, uh, so I knew a little bit about it. Didn't know quite, uh, the extent of what, what sure. they go through. Um, and, and I think it was important for us. We discussed it, that we want to help out this Romito Foundation as much as we can. So hopefully listeners can donate anything that often helps. Yep. Uh, because there's all these hidden expenses that we just don't know about. Well, and I think sometimes, you know, we get hung up on, you know, when you start talking about nonprofits and, and foundations and stuff, I think we tend to get hung up on only monetary donations. But I think what's, what's really important and what Richard said was that with their foundation, it's not just that. It's, it's if, if you have a skill, um, especially like in construction, where you can help them uh, modify a house to, to make it more wheelchair Correct. accessible, those are huge donations. Those are huge helps to these families. And, and so it's not just money. And, and sometimes it's just, it's either material or time or, or both. So what wonderful outcome there. Cause that, that's exactly right. And he stated that a lot. Uh, you know, they're, they're really based around giving quality of life to these kids. And, and, uh, yeah, that's just emotional to me, man. Yeah. Just emotional. But on the flip side, it's also what you learn, right? Cause I think a lot of us, we forget how to live Yeah. and we, we, piss away a lot of our lives not truly living and and uh, they're really focused on that and I thought that was something that it, it even it flowed over into my world and yeah. it's like you know what I need to be paying more attention I need to be doing more things because I'm taking a lot of things for granted no absolutely and in you know for them it was all you know once they realize that there's there's no cure you know and obviously the research costs tons of money and, and they are helping with that but it really becomes quality of life and and what they found was some of the existing programs ceased at a certain age, right? At 18. Correct. So these kids that are in their 20s, um, you know, they're not getting those opportunities to go out and experience camp. And, and I, I thought it was, I thought the hunting part is, uh, is really cool. You and, you know, you and I have both uh, been out hunting. Uh, obviously, you've got all the land back in, in Missouri, and I know you made a gracious extension to them. Um, but, uh, you know, how cool is that that those kids, you know, and, and I, I thought it was really cool about how they have these uh, electronic triggers, right? So yeah. these kids can still uh, hunt. Yeah, they're, they're in um, the game, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And, then, and then when you see the video and you see just the pure joy uh, on this kids just being outdoors and doing outdoors things, um, yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. I mean, again, uh, for me, though, it's like, uh, you know, I'm going to appreciate taking my son out more when we're doing it. You know, sometimes I'm like, that's a lot of work. You're packing in stuff. You're doing stuff. But uh, that five seconds of the biggest smile you've ever seen makes everything worth it. Well, I, I, I absolutely agree. And I can tell you that, you know, even with me, it's it, it's not even it doesn't have to go so far as even packing up and going out hunting or going, you know, fishing or whatever. Um, you know, it, it could be something as simple as, uh, you know, got, going out in the garage and just uh, working with your teenage son on, on a project or, on, you know, we have uh, we have the, the old Model A out there and it's been a lot of fun having my 14 year old go out and help me work on that, you know, because yeah. he's learning skills. They don't apply to new cars, but he's right. learning skills and we're spending time and he's really interested in it, So it's a lot of fun. No, it's good. It, it woke us up a little bit. Yeah. Give me your uh, number one takeaway. Oh, man. Um, my number one takeaway was probably, yeah, honestly, it was probably his, uh, Richard's vulnerability. Um, you know, that part of the podcast when, and, and we know Richard, uh, and uh, we know the person he is. Um, so for me, this really just hit home where when he was, uh, him and his wife, Jamie, were given that diagnosis on their first son, Dominic. And Richard, he's a fighter, man. That's what this guy does. And he was like, all right, let's, you know, what do we got to do? And the doctor said, no, Mr. Romito, you don't understand. You need to go home and you need to care for your kid. There's no cure. And he breaks down. Yeah. And that just, that was probably one of the biggest things for me that, you know, I just did that one really hit me hard right there. So yeah. what about you? 
Yeah, I mean, for me, um, yeah, I mean, the perseverance of, of this family, like, uh, it's not once, it's not twice, it's three times. And um, just the overall, you know, I think uh, you and I talked about this once before. Um, it, it was that whole faith-based thing, too, that got him through it, you know, and how they... He just kind of had to surrender to the to the entire thing that this is what it was and this is how he's going to handle it yeah. and and really create these incredible memories uh, doing the foundation. I mean, I'm just always in awe of these people. I mean, just always in awe, and they find a way of making everything good. And and so I, my takeaway, I think, was more the whole generalized, um, just the whole generalized feel and emotion, and and then just those guys not taking the story for the story they're going to go ahead and make it the best story they can possibly make yeah and you know you just you said a word that just uh, reminded me of something and so maybe this is maybe this would be my my second big takeaway from the whole thing was when richard was you, you were talking about faith and richard said that you know he, he had a lot of conversations with the good lord and not all were pleasant right yeah but at, at some point he he found that trust in god and what god was giving him and he surrendered to God. Yeah, he said in that. that faith. Yeah. And you know, you just said that, and it just reminded me of that. And I was like, God, that is so. It's so true. It doesn't matter how religious you are. Like you know, if you're a brick and mortar church goer, or you just you know, you just believe, pray, you know, do do all the things right. that that um, you know that give you that faith. Um, I think that's that's a key thing. And and like you said, we found it in so many of these stories. That was a big part of his story for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And uh, the next story tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so kind of ironically enough, speaking of faith, um, this one, uh, you know, this one will test. This will test anybody's faith and, and and belief in God or trust in God, because when you when you're the victim of of human trafficking, which that's the story. Yeah, I've got to believe that every day you're questioning why God would put you in that position. Um, because I, I, I think we both learn few, if any, girls, you know, it is primarily girls, but it mm -hmm. does happen to boys. Sure. Few, if any, people voluntarily put themselves in that position, knowing that's what they're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, so this is, uh, this is uh, Ashley's story. We're Ashley's calling her story. Ashley. Yes, and, and that's what I want to hit on for people who are listening to this. Um, this story with Ashley, um, I personally know um, this story closely. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we do on Truth Talks is you will never see a story from us that is not 100% authentic. Yep. Um, because there is ongoing investigations and different things happening, she is being blurred out, which that was, uh, that was predominantly at our call. Yes. Um, she was willing to come on because I guess that wouldn't maybe have hindered some of the investigation or whatever. But it was our call at Truth Talks to do that. Uh, I think it's a really important that we protect her identity because we don't know what kind of monsters these people are. Yep. And uh, But her story is compelling. And one of the things that I will tell you about the story, and I'm going to leave it here, is that if you look up at human trafficking, sex trafficking, and you go down 1 through 10 of how this happens, her story is almost exactly one through ten. Oh, it checks every box. It checks every box. Yeah. So I'm excited for this. Well, story. and I think, yeah, oh my God, obviously I've, I've been editing this thing for a couple of days now, and and uh, it is it is just such a powerful story. And you know, she doesn't get into a lot of detail on a lot of things because of the reasons you said. Correct. Um, and but this is not the last podcast we're going to do on this either. That's correct. It's going to be part of a series. Yep. And uh, because this is a this is a huge topic. In my opinion, this is a pandemic that's affecting the entire world, but it's one that's not being addressed. Yeah, it's a tough one to talk about. It is tough. One to talk well, about. and we know why. Yeah. So will you so, on Thursday. Yeah. So tune in. Um, if you get a chance, please check out the Remito Foundation. It's uh, remitofoundation.org, and uh, you know, check them out, see what they're doing. If you can help them, reach out to them, uh, offer up whatever help you can, whether it's financial. Uh, in kind um, uh, services, you know, labor, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, thank you to Richard for for sharing that amazing story. Absolutely. And then, uh, quick shout out. Uh, I did a couple of posts, um, but uh, you know, our our audience is growing, 
right? Yes. So thank you, True Talks Nation. Because of you guys, we have hit over 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're over 1,000 followers on Facebook. We are growing. We're in almost every modern country uh, in the world right now, which is fantastic. Um, so please, you know, keep subscribing, keep following us uh, so we can keep putting the content out. So fantastic. All right. All right. Till tomorrow. All right, buddy. Bye-bye.